and welcome to another episode of Two Guys in a Chainsaw. I'm Craig. And I'm Todd. And we are wrapping up our summer fun month. Uh, and uh, this week, I chose the film and I recommended that we take a look at 2010's The Reef. I saw this movie years ago. I have no idea how long, um, probably not too long after it came out. Uh, it was available briefly on Netflix, uh, and that's where I caught it. It was directed by uh, Andrew Trauke, who had one feature film before this, Blackwater, which I watched after I saw this film because mm. I enjoyed this film. Uh, and I really liked them both. It's an Australian film. You know, I, I, I can't say that I'm incredibly well versed in Australian horror movies, but the ones that I've seen, like The Loved Ones and Wolf Creek, which I know, Todd, you're not a huge fan of. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have to do uh, sometime. It's it's kind right. of it's required, I think. <laughs> the the ones I've seen I've enjoyed and and I would say the same for this one. I feel like when I recommended this Todd you said that you didn't know anything about it. Is that true? That's 100% accurate. I had never even heard of it. Although with a title like The Reef, you know it's not like the most original title. <laughs> Maybe I'd heard of it, but no. I don't I didn't know this movie. Yeah, it's <laughs> the title's a little bit generic, and uh, frankly, you know, it, it's not the most unique concept in the world. It's a shark movie, um, but I like shark movies. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Jaws is kind of the penultimate uh, of uh, the big shark block blockbuster movies, but this one, uh, I, I would say, probably has a little bit more in common uh, with the film. Uh, open water. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. That's what I was thinking which, of the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Which was an American film, but I would argue that um, this one was potentially even a little better. And I don't know if this makes the biggest difference in the world, but it kind of made a difference to me is, is the fact that all of the shark footage in this movie is actual shark footage. There, yeah. there, there aren't, uh, as far as I know, you know, in fact, and I'm sure we'll talk about this. There were some times when I found it hard to believe, like, seriously, like, yeah. are these real sharks? <laughs> because <laughs> they're right next to these people. It's kind of what you would expect. But at the same time, I found it to be uh, pretty tense and, and scary. And ultimately, um, I liked it. What did you think? Uh, you know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was tense. I thought there was at least one moment in here, which was absolutely heart wrenching. And I think the best thing I could say about this movie is it's I think it's a skillful piece of writing I think it's a skillful um, piece of directing because it seems to be 100% honest they're, they're mm -hmm. not it, it feels to me like if people are out in the middle of the water being terrorized by sharks this is how it would go down and right. this is how people would react nothing's really overblown I think the even the character development itself isn't really that much <laughs> we kind of get to know these people but not really well and it's not like they're these different personalities being played off, played off of each other for dramatic effect you know they're all just basically friends and relatives who go out and are on a boat and then this bad thing happens and they have to fend for themselves but they're pretty much all on the same team the whole way uh it's just them against the shark right and so in one at one level because it was so honest i feel like it lacked a lot of the dramatic panache that you get from a lot of other movies but that's not necessarily a, a knock against the movie um, there's certainly room for movies like this. You're not going to be watching this movie and experiencing one twist right after another. The thing about the film is it goes pretty straightforward in the direction you imagine it would go. And the only thing that's suspenseful about it is who's going to live and who's going to die. Right, um, right. So, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a fine film. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite shark movie. But, um, you know, it probably swims circles around, say, I don't know, Jaws 3D? Would you say? <laughs> Can't even put them in the same ballpark. Sorry, Craig. That sure. was just a jab at you. In That's okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Hey, we, we got really positive response from that episode. We so did. you yeah. you can jab at me all you Jaws, want. <laughs> Jaws 3D has a lot of fans out there that came out of the woodwork <laughs> after that one. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah, I, you're right. Um, and I think that part of the reason that it doesn't have – 
I don't know, you know, like those dramatic twists and turns that you suggested is is uh, because it's it's another one of those movies that opens up. It, it's set in Australia somewhere, I believe, on the Great Barrier Reef, and it opens up with this beautiful shot, uh, this aerial shot of the reef. Um, and, and we get the title and then it says based on a true story. Now, you know, we see that so often and you always have to take that with a grain of salt. You know, for example, open Mm -hmm. water is also based on a true story, but nobody survived in that movie. So who knows know, they, what happened? They, yeah. <laughs> who knows what really happened exactly? But the true story that this is based on actually is pretty close to what is portrayed in the movie um except for there were fewer people involved I think uh, in the true story there were only 3 people involved but mm-hmm. in both the movie and the story that it's based on there was a survivor uh and so there was somebody you know and i I guess we have to take them at their word but um there was somebody who could kind of give an account of uh these events that happened and also in this movie the predator uh is a great white shark which you know is very scary we're all terrified of great whites because of jaws and and just because they're you know so massive and scary in general in real life uh apparently it was actually a 10 foot tiger shark. Frankly, you know, in looking stuff up about this movie, I, I couldn't find a whole lot. No, um, there really wasn't a lot. I, I know. And I, and I was a little disappointed. And, and when I first watched the movie, I was a little skeptical because the movie kind of hinges on the idea that these people, this group of people uh, who find themselves, you know, capsized in the water are really being hunted by this one shark. Uh, And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, that's stupid. You know, like, like one shark is not going to keep hunting these same people. But according to, you know, the person who actually survived, that is what happened. Now, right. Can they say with any certainty that it was the same shark? I don't know, but I'm willing to take their word that they believed that it was. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And and that's what happens here. But I guess that's kind of uh, getting ahead of ourselves. So let's let's kind of set it up the way that the movie does. Okay. Yeah, go for it. No, you go ahead, Craig. You're you're better at this than I am. I have a terrible I, memory. I know, but I wanted to give you a shot. <laughs> We'd rather hear your voice anyway. You know? Or let me just say you'd rather hear your voice anyway. <laughs> you're starting to sound like my partner. Shut up. Uh, okay. All right. Go for it. So we get the beautiful reef shot. We get the based on true events. uh, And then we meet our main characters. And that's another thing that I love about this movie. There are only six people credited in the whole movie. And one of those people has like two lines. (laughs) So when you're doing a podcast, this is just a blessing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So really, there's only five people to keep up with. First of all, uh, we've got Luke. And, you know, I'll tell you who played them, even though, you know, these are all Australian actors. I don't know any of them from anything else but luke is played by uh damian walsh howling and uh, at the very beginning of the movie he is at the airport and he is picking up his friend matt who is played by uh guyton grantley i think and matt's girlfriend Susie, played by adrian pickering and uh they also have in tow matt's sister kate uh, who is played by Zoe Naylor. You can tell from the very, very beginning. You know, obviously, you know, Luke and Matt are buds. That's great. Matt's got this fiance. That's great. But you can also tell that there's something going on between Luke and Kate, Matt's sister. Like, they, they've they clearly got some history. You can tell that right from the beginning. And of that course. kind of gets... <laughs> because there aren't many people in your life that you would give a sausage to. <laughs> Giant sausage. Giant sausage. <laughs> Did you, I'm still not really sure that I get that joke. Did you find that really strange? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I felt like there there had to be some story behind it, but I thought uh, we were going to get the story at some point. No, I guess we're just supposed to let our imaginations fill in the blanks. <laughs> yeah, she she gifts him a giant sausage, and he's happy about it. So you know, memories, I guess. I guess so. Those. <laughs> 
<laughs> Those earlier sausage days. Oh, yeah. My goodness. <clears throat> Awkward. Uh, All right. Anyway, Luke delivers boats for a living, which sounds like a totally awesome job. So he has this boat available and, you know, there's some talk about, oh, we hope we're not keeping you from anything. He's like, oh, no, no, it's fine. You know, I don't have to be there for a while or whatever. So, you know, it's not, it's not his boat, but he, he delivers boats. And, and so they, they're going to go kind of on this pleasure cruise or whatever. Before they actually get on the boat, they stop uh, at uh, the bait shop on the dock. And Kate is drawn to this wall that has all of these uh, shark jaws, the sixth character who only has a couple of lines shane he uh, i guess he works there it's pretty impressive yeah it's a mako tiger hammerhead that one's a white pointer wow where'd you get these out there yeah yeah strange about the white pointer though people reckon they don't usually come this far north but don't worry what do they say you're more likely to die from a beast than get killed by a shark First of all, I'm terrible at geography, but secondly, I, I don't really know all that much about Australia, except for what I hear is that pretty much everything there wants to kill you. Like they, <laughs> like they have the craziest animals, the craziest insects. Like You have no idea. It's almost, it's completely true. I, I happened to, uh, my wife and I traveled to Australia. We went to the, probably around where these guys are. You know, everybody thinks of Australia, they think of the outback. But if you go yeah. up in the northeastern part of the state of the country where the Great Barrier Reef, you know, most of the diving and good stuff up there is, it's actually rainforest. We went on a hike once through the rainforest carrying rafts on our back to do some whitewater rafting and as we were going through the guide told us now don't touch any plants <laughs> like mm -hmm. be careful what you brush up against i mean we're going th i mean you can't avoid brushing right. up against plants when you're walking through the rainforest on a trail um, but there is a particular plant there and i think they call it the fire plant or something that no kidding if you touch its leaves or its bark, any part of its foliage, it has these microscopic like needles that just enter your skin effortlessly. And inside of these needles, it's like a nerve agent. Ugh. And so you can brush up against one of these leaves, and he said you will feel like, for example, your hand is on fire. And there's and these will be embedded in your skin, and there's nothing you can do about it until all of this runs its course. And he says, eventually you'll calm down and everything will be fine until you take a shower or you get it wet or you brush up against your own hand. And then, boom, it activates everything and you're on fire again. And <laughs> we, my wife actually went to a bo botanical garden. And they had one of these plants in the botanical garden. And the entire thing, like, had all these big signs on it. And I don't remember what it's called. But like, you know, fire plant, blah, 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 blah. And a giant glass case around it <laughs> so that nobody would touch it. Even the plants are going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, it, it sounds like a great country. <laughs> <laughs> like between, it, it seems, between that it and Wolf Creek. It seems like really cool people live there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go in the outback and don't touch any of the plants or see any animals or anything. Right. Right. <laughs> but anyway, this guy at the bait shop, he's like, don't worry about it because you're more likely to die from a bee sting than to be killed by a shark, which I suppose statistically is true. Mm. Um, but that doesn't really make me less scared of sharks and more scared <laughs> of bees. <laughs> I, I think there are like no kidding. There are like 10 deaths from sh by shark like per year worldwide. It's that low. Wow. Something like that. <laughs> Don't quote crazy. me on that, but it's, it's, it's really that low. It's really, it's really low. God, and it, that surprises me with, you know, as These stupid <laughs> as people are, oh, you yeah. know, <laughs> jumping in, swimming with sharks all the time. Whatever. Anyway, so now we know there's all these sharks out there, whatever. They go to board the boat and they meet Warren played by uh, Kieran Darcy Smith. He's not a friend of theirs, but he works with Luke or for Luke. Like, he's the crew on the boat. You know, he's a nice guy. Everybody gets along with him. Which is everybody in this. I mean, nobody has any problem with anybody, right? No. The only Yeah, no. The only thing is, um, you know, the awkwardness between Kate and um, and Luke, who they call Lou all the time. But, but that 
remedies itself pretty quickly. <laughs> right, right. As soon as they get on the boat, they talk. You know, we find out that they have sailed the Mediterranean together, you know, for whatever reason, reasons we don't really know. Like, I, I, I feel like she, you know, went off on vacation or went off to school or something. I don't know. But she's been away for a while. It, it's, it seems like they kind of just put their relationship on hold and it's just been indefinitely on hold. Giving him a sausage to break the ice again. A giant... <laughs> Todd, you're a little obsessed with this giant sausage. I, it's the big mystery of the movie for me. I'm sorry. This is all I could think about while we were going through the film. When are we going to hear about the sausage? Never. I know. You You would think they would have, like, eaten it later, like, you know, beaten the shark with it Some or something. But... Or back when they're, like, talking about sex later on when they're trying to pass the time, like, the story would resurface or something. Like, I thought for sure we would get a payoff. I don't I don't know but like if that's some sort of like inside juke inside joke like wow luke like <laughs> get it kate hey. is, as it stands this is a sausage without a payoff i'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I had a quarter for every time. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so they, they talk and, you know, like they're giving each other eyes. You know, like these people, they're all very good looking, but not, you know, like so Super good looking models. that you couldn't believe that they were real people. But, you know, nice looking people. One of the funny things that having watched this, because this was – Watching it for the podcast, this is actually the third time I'd seen it. But this time I watched it and I noticed that um, Matt has like four lines in the whole movie. Like, really? <laughs> he just stands around most of the time. But that's okay. With a stupid grin on his face mostly. He's yeah. just a happy-go-lucky guy. Good, nice guy, whatever. Okay, so they are going to – they're headed to Signet Reef. I have no idea where that is, but that's apparently where they're headed. But on the way, they stop at this little island that Luke knows about. And it's this tiny little island, you know, no – people on it and it's it's beautiful and um warren stays on the boat but the rest of them take this inflatable dinghy out uh, to the island and um they go snorkeling and there's just all this absolutely gorgeous mm. underwater uh videography there really is and and you know i've seen you know nature specials and things it, the the great barrier reef is i mean it's just it's it's stunning you know the 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 wildlife under there and and all that it's 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 just absolutely beautiful and we get to see some of that well i think this is a really big strength of the movie and i think it's really quite skillful of the director to do what he does here and that is he uses this opportunity even though to be honest nothing <sighs> super interesting happens until like almost halfway through the movie. It's like 40 mm -hmm. minutes in before we get to even see a shark, really. What he does here when they're diving is he really gives a sense of what, what the ocean is like and what diving is like. Most of the time you're above water and you're waiting, your head's up there, and all you see is just, it just looks like flat land, you know, as far as right. the eye can see, nothing to see. But underneath you, where your legs are dangling, there is a whole other world, you know, that you are ignorant of until you stick your head under the water. And so it's really neat that he has these snorkeling shots to kind of give us a sense of that world. Now, I'm um, I'm actually open water certified. I was lucky enough to actually, that was one of the reasons for our trip to Australia. So I actually got to dive uh, and get certified on the Great Barrier Reef. And um, some of the shots here that they do really capture well this experience of being under the water. And I think one of the coolest parts about it is, uh, for example, um, there are shots where, of course, you know, we've all seen them, right? You're going across coral, you're, you're seeing mm -hmm. fish, everything's up close, everything seems fairly shallow, relatively speaking. But then um, there's this moment where I think it's Kate. I think it's yeah, Kate. It is. Mm -hmm. She she's coming across. And we're kind of seeing from behind her and seeing her birds, her eye, her point of view, and suddenly that drops off. It's almost like an underwater cliff, basically, uh, where suddenly it's just completely deep and dark, and you can't see anything. You right. Know? And that is a bit spooky. It is like coming up to the edge of a cliff. And it's part of what's so amazing about it. But in a, in another way, it's what gets a little bit scary about diving. And that is when you come across this sudden depth like that. And at that moment, 
the way that the camera lingers and the way that the music is and the kind of the look on her face through her snorkel and everything is really well edited to where you're almost expecting something to just come out of that darkness, right? Like a right. creature would jump out of the fog in a horror movie. It doesn't, but you know, later on we revisit that same scenario and the, that same feeling, you know, that we get. It's like he's priming the pump. He's priming us for that moment that's going to come later. And it's really well set up here, I think. It's very well done. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I couldn't agree more. You know, like you said, all of the stuff on the reef, you know, is it's very beautiful. It's what we are uh, used to seeing when we see that kind of nature photography, you know, in the ocean. Um, but like you said, there's just that drop off, and and I thought that it was so it, it built the tension because underwater, you know, they've got goggles, you know, so they can see but in that great depth their vision is very limited you know they can maybe see you know i don't know what 15 20 yards but then everything just becomes very fuzzy and blurry and it's just kind of like infinite space and and later in the movie when they are being hunted by sharks what's his name the main guy luke is constantly underwater looking for them and he's just kind of looking into this infinite space and and the, these giant sharks will just kind of materialize seemingly out of nowhere mm. and by the time that you see them they're right there yeah <laughs> <You know>? like, <laughs> <laughs> like they just appear uh and, and it's nightmarish i love the ocean i i absolutely love being in the water and being in the ocean but it's terrifying you know it's it <laughs> It is like outer space, you know, it's, it's so, it's, it, it, like you said, it's, it's a whole different world. And, and I felt like they did a really good job of uh, capturing that here. You also said something about the music and, you know, this is all, I, I love an original score. I am such a sucker for an original score. Uh, and, and this movie has one and uh, it, it's really good. And, you know, when, when they're looking around at all the pretty coral and the pretty fish, you know, it's, um, the music's very ambient and, you know, it's, it's really nice and pretty. And then all of a sudden, uh, when she sees this drop off, you know, there's, there's just a change in the score to indicate that change in tone. And, uh, I just, I thought it was really well done. It, it kind of had me at that point. I would say the score saves it, honestly. Uh, the first 40 minutes would be pretty boring without those musical cues. And sometimes that works against a movie. You know, sometimes you can kind of see through that, and that's really transparent. They're trying to make things seem scary with just the music, uh, but really nothing's going on, and you feel a little cheated. In here, you just get a slowly building tension, and I think the music contributes to that. It, And like I said, it's really priming the pump for later. And I, I just think it skillfully does that. It just comes in at the right moments. It's the right time tone and everything I, like you i couldn't say enough good things about the music for this movie for sure yeah and and i thought that they also did a good job in this moment you know kate it, it's mostly from her perspective at this point you know she sees a sea turtle that's beautiful she sees all these little tropical fish beautiful but then all of a sudden she also sees a little sand shark you know and it, it's a small shark it doesn't really pose any threat but it just is a reminder these things are out there, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you're on their turf. Uh, and I thought that was a nice little touch. They hang out on the island for a while. Luke and Kate, the, the two couples split off and Luke and Kate kiss and then they talk and then they kind of like their talking gets kind of tense because he, it seems like, is totally ready just to jump back into their relationship. And she is still a little bit reluctant. And um, so there's some tension there. Oh, it's so it's so surface. Like, <laughs> I mean, remember she's the one who gave him the sausage, and earlier on, <laughs> earlier on in that scene, you know, she seemed to be the one to to want to jump in, and he's the one that held back. I, I felt like this bit between him and her was so trite. Like, okay, get over it already. We know you guys are going to hook up again. Just this to me was the one unconvincing part of an otherwise honest movie was trying to force this little relationship drama between the two of them. I'll agree with you that the dialogue seemed a little silly. It's just just sex or is it something else? I don't know. You know what I think? I think you're scared. Scared? Mm -hmm. Scared of what? Me. 
You? Us? But for me, I thought the acting was convincing enough to pull it off. I don't know. Plus that the guy who plays Luke, he has these deep brown eyes. I, 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 I just might have been a little enchanted. <laughs> 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 but it's it, it's you know it's fairly unimportant regardless anyway matt comes running in and says hey there's something wrong on the boat so they run back out to the uh beach and uh warren is like flagging them down from from the yacht and uh luke says oh my gosh the the tide is going out much more quickly than I expected. Um, so they jump really quick in their dinghy and uh, they're headed towards the boat, but they hit the reef uh, and and the dinghy starts to lose air and eventually completely deflates, but not before they get there. They get back and there's kind of this um, tense moment where all of a sudden now they're in the shallows and the reef, while it's very beautiful, is also can be very destructive uh, for boats or even for people you know it's sharp you can cut yourself on it whatever but uh they they get out of trouble um and they get back on the water and they're sailing and you know the the night passes and the morning comes and in the morning kate and luke make up like oh sorry it got so weird yesterday but i still like you whatever blah blah <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then from here on out everything's great <laughs> right but right really they're too. fine so luke goes down below to start making breakfast and then out of nowhere mm. there's this huge well they hit something i mean that's that's what happens presumably part of the reef they hit but it happens so quickly that as the viewer you really have no idea what's going on like it just goes dark and all of a sudden the boat is full of water and down is up and up is down and Eventually, Luke makes his way outside of the boat, and it has completely flipped over. And Kate, who was topside when this happened, she's in the water, but everybody else was still inside, presumably maybe even still asleep. And so Luke goes back in looking for them and and he gets them you know he he gets uh Susie out first and then he finds Warren and gets him out and then um Matt's the last one he finds and and Matt is kind of trapped behind a door that's stuck but they get him out uh and so they're they're all on the outside of the boat and Warren says let's get out of the water um and and you can tell that he's very concerned um, so they so they all climb up on top of the flipped boat and they realize that it's it's damaged beyond repair you know there's i don't know what they would do anyway like even if it wasn't like how are they gonna flip this huge (laughs) right (laughs) so luke is looking out at the rubble that's floating around and he sees it drifting away and so he draws the conclusion that they are on a current and that this current is pulling them farther out to sea, which, you know, if they weren't capsized, wouldn't be a big deal. But because they are, he says, It's really easy not to get found out here. This boat's going to sink, and it's going to sink soon. There's land over there, and that's where I think we should be going. We know that this island that we were on is north. I (laughs) guess... Now, see, here's the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> this island that they were on was beautiful, but it wasn't even this. It was like maybe the size of a football field. And they are out in the middle of the ocean. Like, you can swim north all you want, but what How are, you gonna are the odds? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess what it boils down to is that he says they don't really have any choice. You know, they're out in the middle of the ocean. He says, Luke says, the boat is sinking. It's going to sink. So if we stay on it, we're going to end up in the water anyway. We're just going to be even farther away from land than we are now. (sighs) Gosh, I don't know. (laughs) What would you do? You know, that's what I was thinking. I was like, what would I do in this situation? I mean, I guess he's right. But are you better off floating on a boat or are you better off floating in the water, swimming in some direction that, you know, who knows? You know, I mean, he thinks it's only going to be 10 to 12 miles of swimming. I say you're swimming in a water with currents. How can you 
stay aimed properly. And it's only going to be 10 to 12 miles. Like, when's the last <laughs> time you swung 10 to 12 miles? Sure. Like, like no, no way. Right. And, you know, so there's there's a – it's not really conflict because nobody's forcing anybody to do anything. But Luke goes back under – the boat to uh you know gather whatever supplies that he can gather and and they do have an emergency beacon but he explains that it's an old one and you know really a plane has to be flying right over you if it's gonna if they're gonna hear it or whatever so he does he goes back under there and this is actually a really good scene in the movie i thought you know he's under the boat and the the sound effects are great you know it's very tense with the sound of the water and the sound of things banging around under there and he hears at some point, the people on top of the boat start banging, banging, banging on the boat, and he can hear them. And if you listen closely, what they're saying is very muffled, obviously, but you can kind of hear them say, come up, and you can hear the word shark. Mm -hmm. He sticks his head out, and again, this is just another one of those shots where he's looking around, but it's Nothing just open see. space, yeah. right? Like. He, he comes back up and they say, well, we, we saw something break the water. He's, well, what was it? Uh, I don't know. And he says, okay, well, I've got to get these supplies. So unless you actually see a shark, don't call me back up. So he goes down. And again, I, I'm breezing by this because there's not much to say about it. But it's a really effective scene uh, under there where... And the cinematography, again, the photography is really good down here. And... I mean, there's a lot of care that went into this. The lighting is quite good. Not only is mm -hmm. it good and visible, but it's realistic, you know? And this is something you could really fudge, I think, as a filmmaker. Just, you know, shaky cam it up and, and show close-ups here and there and, and try to not spend too much time, you know, showing your details. But uh, I really felt like I was down there under the boat with him. I got a yeah. real clear sense of, of the geography down there and what he was doing and what he had available and where he had to go to get out and and i just say that because you don't often find that in movies in difficult situations like this yeah hats off seriously to all of the <laughs> all of the the cinematography in this film it's 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 very good yeah very good. and it, it's very you know it's very claustrophobic and of course you know they're in this kind of catastrophic situation and and that the tension plays it reminded me this is kind of a random uh connection but uh did you ever see dead calm with uh nicole kidman and billy zane and no i didn't uh, uh well you should it's really good but <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a similar scene uh where one of the characters is uh, under a capsized boat anyway yeah, really reminded me of sleepaway camp uh, a few weeks ago you know. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Remember yeah, that jerk was like under that. the capsized boat, the capsized canoe singing to himself, and <laughs> it looked like daylight under there? Yeah. <laughs> Almost the same thing. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Similar quality. Oh, God. All right. So he gets his he gets supplies. He goes back up, and uh, they're going to go. He, get, he starts passing out wetsuits, um, and he gives one to... Susie and Warren gives Susie a look and Susie's like, what? And he's like, you look like a seal in that. Sharks love seals. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so this was stupid too. I'm sorry. <sighs> I, I don't get, I don't buy this. I don't buy this Warren thing. I think, I mean, it's thrown in there and yeah, okay, Warren's afraid of the water, but Warren's, Warren's character is that he is super familiar with the ocean. He says, I fished right. in these waters, so whatever. I know what's down there, blah, blah, blah. He's telling her that a person in a wetsuit looks like a seal to a shark. None of this really rings true. I, as a diver, I'm tell, I've am swum with sharks, right? They're no big deal. They really are no big deal. Especially you're out in the middle of the ocean and things like that. The, the chances that there's going to be... That you're going to get attacked by a shark. I mean, there's a reason that this freak accident, this thing that was was based on, happened way back in 1983. You know, it just doesn't happen. Like Jaws doesn't really right. happen. You know, so this notion that he has this this knowledge and that this expert here is super afraid. It's kind of like the complete opposite of what it should be. That bothered me a little bit. I mean, I get it for the dramatic purposes, and that's fine. I'll give it a pass. But for, for a movie that does such a good job, I think, of making things somewhat true and realistic, I, I didn't even like that ass. I think he could have just left that part out of his character. He could have had his own reason for wanting to stay or whatever, or he could have gone with him. It really wouldn't have made a difference, except they're just trying to up the, the peril. 
right? They're trying to up the potential for, for danger with sure. them swimming. It's, it's all for the movie. See, and I guess that you're speaking from experience that I don't have. And I, I don't know. So then I guess, is that just an urban legend? Like I had always heard that that's why surfers were at risk because now – Granted, there's the whole addition of the surfboard, and I don't know if that makes any difference, but I had heard that, you know, from below, surfers kind of are similar in shape and size to seals, and so sharks were kind of attracted to that. No, that's all just made up? Uh, I, I, if it's true, I've never heard of it before. Nobody in my whole dive course that I took ever said anything like you need to, it was quite the opposite. Actually. It's like, hope we can see some sharks. You know, you're going to love that. Don't worry. They're fine. I guess Hollywood and <laughs> I understand. what I know, what I know about sharks comes from horror movies. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and be overly cautious. You're, you're not, you're not going to catch me in a shark cage. You're not going to catch me, you know, free diving with sharks. It's not going to, I'm not going to take, my chances okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's if, if somebody else wants to do that you know more power to you but i'm i i'm kind of attached to my limbs um so you want to stay attached to your limbs <laughs> right I get uh, to be fair it's a movie i get it it's fine we'll move on it's not a big deal <laughs> it's just one of those little things you know that kind of makes me roll my eyes a little bit yeah. It's all right. Okay, so they're going to go. Both women are reluctant, but Matt, uh, Luke's friend, says he's going to go. He says, you know, Luke knows as much about the ocean as anybody, you know, if, if I'm, I'm going to take his advice. So Matt's going to go. So, of course, his fiance or whatever, Susie, she's going to go to. Um, Kate takes more convincing. In fact, she says she's not going to go. She says she's going to stay with Warren and the rest of them. Uh, get in the water uh, and start taking off. Uh, but eventually, you know, Kate calls to them and says, hold on, I'm coming. And she tries to get Warren to go, but Warren's not going and and, and he stays. And so they get in the water and, and they start swimming for it. Luke warns them not to splash too much. Um, and, and then this, you know, this is the rest of the movie. They're, they're in the water and that enough is, is, terrifying to me like i get that they're scared to death of sharks and i would be too but i would be equally if not more scared of the idea that there's just no way in hell that they're gonna find land <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> no way no way it's pretty miserable and i think i'm trying to remember i remember really loving open water and that plays in the same territory like you said earlier and i think it came out a couple of years before this movie if i'm not mistaken they're almost contemporaries right yeah but um, I think, if I remember correctly, one aspect of open water that was kind of interesting was that they started going a little crazy out there, like they were seeing mirages or something. And yeah. I thought that would come into play here as well. In fact, you almost wonder, again, you're swimming forward and you're freaking out. You're worried about sharks. You've even seen some suspicious stuff. I mean, how could you not every second of, you know, every with every other kick, you're thinking you see something in the waves out there. You know, it, it right. would just be a nightmarish situation for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so they're swimming along and uh, they see... Uh, I, gosh, I don't know. You know, they're at first they're kind of talking and laughing, and then something breaks the water, and that quiets them down really quick. And um, Luke checks underwater; he doesn't see anything, so they keep swimming. And then they see this giant. They see something floating in the water, and uh, as they get a little bit closer, they think that it's a turtle. And Matt swims out to it and and kind of turns it around now i don't know what they were expecting to see this turtle has to be dead they don't float above water like that <laughs> um but when he turns around this giant sea turtle its head and its forelimbs um appear to have been mangled you know bitten off um, which freaks them out and would freak me out too. And they have to get uh, away from that. So they swim away, but Susie's totally freaked out. Um, we cut briefly back to Warren on the boat and he sees something circling the boat. Uh, and eventually we see that it's big sharks <laughs> and then they cut, it cuts back to the four. And then that's the last we ever see of Warren. We never see him again. Poor Warren. <laughs> yep. Hi, Warren. Thanks. It was fun. The four of them are back together. They're, they're kind of panic. Well, 
Susie starts freaking out and and says, "There, I see something. There, something below the water. Something's following us." And at first, nobody else sees anything. And Luke checks underwater; he doesn't see anything. And then he kind of maybe glimpses something, but he's not sure. And he says, "Keep going." And then he checks again. And then this is that shot where he's just looking into the deep. And then it's 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 almost like something coming into focus in a blurry TV screen, but this shark just is coming right towards them. And it's a huge fricking great white shark. It's massive. It's huge. (laughs) And it it also just makes you, or it made me anyway, realize the enormity of the ocean because, you know, here they are these little insignificant you know, nothings floating in the infinite space. And then here comes this enormous fish, but it's, it doesn't, you almost can't even get the scale of it because there's nothing else to compare it to, you know, like it's just, it's, it's like, it's just floating in the void. (laughs) Uh, It's, it's crazy. He comes up and he says, there's a shark. And so they're all freaking out and it's circling them. And it's really close. I would say that at some points, you know, it's like within feet of them. Well, isn't this somewhere around here is the point where it just kind of brushes right up against them, right? It kind of comes out of the water and over a little bit it does it pops up right next to them like it, it brushes up against kate so much so that she loses her half of the paddleboard this is when i was wondering you know how much of this can really be real you know like i i can believe actors if they were trained you know being in the water with sharks in relatively close proximity like you said they're probably going to be okay i I think even i know that for the most part sharks are you know mostly inquisitive but if if they you know sense any danger or whatever they'll you know kind of be on their way for the most part but this shark comes up right on top of them yeah literally i I thought this that has to be I mean, they said, from what I read, there was no CGI or anything. All the sharks were real. And I thought if any scene in this film had some compositing done or had a fake shark or something in it, it had to be that one. So um, that was a pretty impressive little bit of little shot if, if that was a real shark. It's really quick. It happens very fast. It looks very real. It's very scary and uh you know like i said the it it knocks the flotation device away from kate and so then now it's i don't know like 20 feet away or something and matt um decides to swim for it uh and and he goes for it and he gets to it um but then the shark just hits him like you see it coming up right behind him and it hits him and it, it takes him down um, and he pops back up and there's blood everywhere and they start swimming to him. Oh, my, my leg's gone. You gotta, oh, oh, you gotta go. You gotta leave me. can't swim. I'm useless to you. You gotta go. He's gonna, he's gonna come back. Look at me. Why are you so... And that was one of the things that I read was actually based on the true story. The first one of the victims who was hit lost his leg from what I read. And it was very brief. It wasn't a detailed description, but um, it said that, you know, he kind of very bravely swam away from the other two people in the water to try to keep the shark away from them. Um, And that's not exactly what happens here. You know, they go to him and he says, go away, go away, go away. And then he passes out. Like he's gone. He could be unconscious. He could be dead. I mean, you know, if he lost his leg and he's losing that much blood, I mean, it wouldn't take long. But they do. They swim away from him. And then the shark comes back and and finishes them off. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, we're about we're almost an hour into the movie when when he dies. And I think that with the attack on him uh, and later on, I think about an an hour and 10 minutes later, uh, Susie, Susie gets taken. Uh, Both of these cases, it's just what I really like about this movie, I think, is just how sudden and quiet these deaths are. 
Uh huh. They just feel very, again, like they feel like they're a more realistic portrayal than somebody like flailing around screaming. It just, boom, the shark's got you. It bit his leg it, or it yanks him under. You don't hear anything. You barely see anything. And when he comes up, he's not in a state to scream or yell or do anything. He's got minutes to go before he goes into shock or passes out. And the same thing with Susie. When she goes, it's the same sort of deal. She gets yanked under. If you're not even looking in her direction, you might not even notice it, you know? Right. It's just heart-wrenching. I felt it was, like, super heart-wrenching, just how quick it was. Yeah. It just makes you think, like... And you watch enough of these horror movies, and they really try to make the deaths an ordeal. You know, they're supposed to be a big scene, right? It's supposed to be some, some battle or some real intensity, some build or whatever. And this is kind of how death is sometimes. It just happens. And the terror is in the suddenness of it. Uh, one minute they were there, the next minute they're not there. And it's tragic. You know, it's absolutely tragic. There's no fight yeah. to put up. There's no nothing. And that's, I think, that's the emotion that I got out of this movie. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't crying through this movie. I wasn't no. super, you know, I didn't feel like it was... I didn't even feel like it was super intense, to be quite honest with you, for most of it. But these scenes still had that impact on me because I think they were played out in this way. Yeah, well, and and this scene, you know, was a little bit heart-wrenching, too, because, you know, Susie's his girlfriend, so you expect her to be upset, and she she clearly is. But she keeps it – to either she keeps it together a little bit more or she's so in shock that she just allows Luke to kind of drag her away. But – I had kind of forgotten up until this moment that Matt is Kate's brother Mm -hmm. and she freaks out, you know, as you would, you know, she's devastated and she's screaming and crying and begging him to stay, you know, as he's probably already dead. And I thought the acting was good, you know, and, and after, after that, uh, another night passes um, and they they wake up the next morning. And the cool thing when they wake up the next morning is they see land. Now, it's not the island that they were looking for, but it's this little, you know, outcropping of land on the reef. And it's like right there, you know, a couple hundred yards away probably, but within sight, definitely within reach. And they start swimming for it. And there's a tense moment where they think the shark is back. but And then they all laugh because it was really just a dolphin. Um But then just seconds later, Susie says, wait a second, is that the dolphin? And like you said, just out of nowhere, boom, she's gone. Like, (laughs) like the shark just, it just hits her. You don't see it coming. Uh, She's, she's just gone. Um, And she, you know, resurfaces for a second, but then she's gone again. And Matt, or excuse me, Luke looks down uh, with his goggles under the water and you just see this trail of blood. Like clearly the shark has taken her into the depths. Um, And, 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 you know, like, so they're so close to this, this area of land and they're on the reef. So there are these little places where they can kind of stop and get up out of the water and you just think that oh they've got to make it they've got to make it they're so close they're right but there. to get there you know there are these areas of reef but there are also these areas of deep water that they still have to go over um and the shark just keeps coming it just keeps coming after them and so they swim and swim and swim there's a moment where they stop again on one of these little you know pieces of the reef and kate realizes that her foot is bleeding which can't be good when there's a shark in the water and but they're swimming swimming and and the shark is like literally chasing them like it's it's right behind them and they get there and the first time i saw this now i knew what happened the second and third time i saw it but the first time i saw it, I'm like come on come on come on like they're right there and and sadly it's not like a beach where they can just walk out you know like it's this big rock formation so it's elevated and so it's difficult for them to get out and uh luke pushes kate up and she gets up there and then he's like pull me up pull me up pull me up and she's trying to pull him up and you see the shark coming and he doesn't make it yeah the shark just grabs him and takes him down and you know she's screaming and crying please come back please come back and he and he does it and <laughs> he's that's gone. the end <laughs> yeah that's it 
And ah. once again, it's not like his body pops back up. It's not like you see nope. a big red spot in the water. Anything super dramatic, it's just like, boom, he's gone. Stillness. Her screaming. End credits. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do give us a little epilogue script. It says that Kate was rescued uh, the next day by a fishing trawler. Um, and it says that despite a massive search, no remains of Warren or the yacht were ever found. Um <sighs> Gosh, I, I'm I'm kind of conflicted about the ending because it's so gut wrenching. You know, they're right there. You know, like yeah. you're yeah. literally home free, and then it gets him anyway. And I was talking like I, my partner asked me what movie we watched, and I was kind of telling him about it, and he's like, "Okay, so who made it? Who died?" And I was telling him, <laughs> and I was telling him about this scene, and I was like, and he pushes her up, and then she starts to pull him up. And the shark gets him, and I'm like, it's totally her fault. (laughs) (laughs) Could you try a little harder? Like, come on. There's a shark right behind me. (laughs) I don't know, man. She didn't have a chance. I was looking at this and thinking she was going to get pulled back into the water because it was, you know, for her to get up there in the first place was a miracle. And then it's just such a smooth rock, slippery rock surface. I thought for sure in her attempts to pull him up, she'd end up getting pulled back down. Yeah. You know, so. And that could have happened. So I don't know. You know, this this is a different kind of movie. It's it's one of these based on a true story. It's more of a tragedy. I, I don't know than a horror within the standard horror movie that we see. You know, right. a, a lot of horror movies they've got some moral center to them. You know, it's like people tend to get what's coming to them, or there's some you know people doing stupid things and they pay for it. In this sense, it's just a bunch of friends who are who are going out on a fun little trip somewhere they're all they're not doing anything they're not supposed to do nothing bad is supposed to happen to them and something bad happens and yeah. only one person survives yeah, yeah man against nature wrong place wrong time yeah so. and so in that sense it's like oh a bit of a downer for me anyway it just it is what it is it's i i can't say i thought the movie was fantastic i can't even say that i felt like it was um dramatically interesting (laughs) through most of it i mean there were moments you know there were the moments but i mean it's just it's kind of like open water in a way like it's people out in the middle of the water what 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 more can they really do you know right uh there aren't places to run to there aren't places to hide you're just waiting for them to get attacked and then after they're attacked you're waiting for the next person to get attacked and there's nothing clever somebody's going to come up with there's nothing um there's no big reveal or something that's going to happen it's just going to play out. And so right. in that sense, it was, for me, not as exciting as, say, Jaws 3D <laughs> you sure, know, sure. or whatever. But um, but I appreciate it. It's a fine bit of filmmaking and still had its emotional punches. And again, when you hear that it's based on a true story, you you know, your heart kind of goes out for the, the victims and that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's a nice little movie, but... Um, for me, it, it, it's okay. I'm probably not going to watch it again. Yeah, I get it. I, I kind of hoped that you would like it more, but I, I get where you're coming from. Uh, the first time I saw it was a long time ago, and I just remembered it fondly. And then the second time I watched it, I told you I woke up in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep, so I just put it on, uh, and I ended up watching the whole thing. And I thought, uh, it's not as good as I remember. And then I sat down to watch it um, – for for this and you know i was watching it with more of a critical eye and i think that i just appreciated it for its components you know that the acting is good the soon the cinematography is great um and you're right it's not a standard horror movie but movies like this do get to me mm. I, I don't know necessarily scare me more, but they do get to me in a way that your typical horror movie doesn't get to me in that this could happen. Like it, it would yeah. be one in a billion that it would happen to me, but it could happen. And uh, that there's just something really unsettling about that. It's, it's not going to keep me out of the ocean, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be swimming with sharks. You're, I'm telling you, you're not going to find me. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not going to have the pleasure of doing that. I'll, maybe this is some of my own little bias coming in, too. You know, I've hinted before that but for me, movies are pretty are, are escapism. And if you start to get a little too real about it, it just bothers me a little too much, you know? And, and uh, it kind of pisses me off sometimes. Like, I feel like my emotions have been toyed with. I don't want to be reminded sometimes that the world is a terrible place and not everybody sure. comes out okay or deserves what they get. And And one thing that's kind of nice about horror movies in general is that they're not usually so nihilistic as you would imagine they would be, you know, right, right. about all the horrible subjects they are. Generally, like I said, there's kind of a moral center and people get what's coming to them and the bad things happen to the quote unquote right people, (laughs) you know, and the pure survive. Whereas movies like this, you know, I finish watching and I just kind of sometimes feel sick to my stomach. Like, oh, this is just reminding me the world's not that way. <laughs> you know, bad True. things happen to True. bad to people, to good people for no good reason. And, uh, and, and then they live with that tragedy. And so I can, I can't say I enjoy <laughs> it as much, you know, so maybe that's a little bit of where I'm coming from as well, deep down inside. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, even for you who was not a huge uh, fan of this movie, but even more so for our other listeners out there, uh, I would really recommend this director's other uh, major feature film, which was yeah. Blackwater. I was interested in reading about it, about a crocodile in the jungle, right? Yeah. It's a very similar movie. <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it's the same kind of thing, you know, kind of people in nature being stalked by this uh, deadly predator. Um, and it's also set in Australia, but it's set more like you were talking about kind of in the rainforest marshy areas. Um, and these people, you know, just kind of go out on a day cruise or whatever. And um, uh, they are attacked by this crocodile. And uh, again, I, I, I watched it right after I watched this movie specifically because I enjoyed this movie and I remember enjoying it too. It may be very similar. Uh, if you were to watch it, you might have the same feelings about it that you had about this movie, but um, I would recommend it. I, I liked it. We should maybe take a look at it sometime. You got to see a movie that's different, you know, and this movie is definitely different. It's not, it's not your ordinary shark movie. It's, it's, it's good in that way, I think. And I actually, you know, as an Australian movie, we don't review many Australian Australian movies because they don't get a fair shake, really. I mean, Hollywood is such a force that uh, yeah. a lot of other countries just have a hard time breaking away from that and, and, and against that. But this movie I read had a very interesting marketing campaign in that they live streamed, and this was back in 2010. They mm-hmm. live streamed. Mm-hmm. To uh, like up to, I think it was like 10,000 people a day who could get online and watch the whole behind the scenes process of making this movie. And that's pretty cool as well. I agree. Yeah. I, I would recommend it, checking it out if this kind of movie appeals to you for sure. Like you said, it, it may not be for everybody, but uh, I think that it's very competently made. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Two Guys in a Chainsaw. If you enjoyed this episode, we've got all kinds of back episodes. You can find us uh, at our website at twoguys.red40net.com. Is that right, Todd? That's the one. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Or you can find it. We've got a Facebook page. Uh, You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, all over the place. We would love to hear any feedback that you've got for us, whether that be uh, your opinions on this movie or anything else you'd like to chat with us about. That wraps up our summer movie theme month. We're going to be moving on to some requests. Uh, And it's funny, uh, since we have been saying that we're going to be doing requests, we've gotten a lot of them. Oh my gosh. (laughs) We've got enough requests to last us the rest of the year. (laughs) I know. If if you have a movie you'd like us to watch, go ahead and throw your title uh, in the hat. Those of you out there who are throwing out requests, you're throwing out some stuff some good stuff some stuff I've never heard of so uh, I'm really looking forward to that Um, but until then I'm Craig and I'm Todd with two guys and a chainsaw (laughs) 